This is the Party Poker Premier League Poker 5, and for the first time ever, the event is being held in the City of Music, Vienna. Before the main event begins, there's a chance for the global qualifiers to win the two final seats. In the first global qualifier event, it was English online qualifier Matthew Franklin who won through to the Premier League lineup. Now the second global qualifier event will determine who takes that last spot. This is what happened last time when Group A and B battled it out to make it through to today's final table. The qualifying stage saw two groups of six players battle it out with three players in each game progressing through to the final table with their chips. Rack them up, event two global qualifier for Premier League Poker 5, ready to rock and roll. All in. Okay. He's up for the challenge, it's a cool and cold flip. Ben is left with 9,000. What's my odds to take it down now? Down to chew out for for Ben. Now. And down to okay. five now. I'm on it. Here we see it, and Bruno's just like, nothing has gone right for me. Yeah, that's it for Bruno, unlucky. I will. I call. It's two cards for three kings. Amir Maslimi has given it one exciting ride that I will never forget. It's a deserving trio here. It's pretty exciting. And of course, these three are going to be joined in the final by the three players coming through from Heat B. This Heat Giovanni Risso has the star power of the main Premier League itself. Boy. Wow. It's going all in. And he knew as soon as he got called, he knew he was in trouble. And he makes it small. That's so sick. Yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's the crying call. And now we have a race, and this looks like a watery end for Vinky. And the sink has now sunk for Vink. Oh, nice uh, time to pick up a little rush. He might just go bonkers and then try some some fancy play. Oh. I told you, I told you, oh, I knew this was coming. Big blow up. There oh, is a banger. His oh. mouth went dry. He, he already His feels sick. His mouth went dry. Oh, go! Oh! oh! This is so sick. And that's end of days. Nearly banger. Just under 10 big blinds. Small in as well. Wolanowski all in on top. And banger's in a great spot. Not that that helped him before. I really, I really want to win this one. I'll be honest with you. Oh, that's so cruel. Griffin Banger has met his nemesis, and it's Ben Wilanowski. We now have our lineup for the second Global Qualifier Final. Melanie and Dominic are going to be sitting together pretty much here at the final, and you guys obviously know each other pretty well. What can we expect out there in terms of banter? Well, I mean, I just met him yesterday, but <laughs> he's a pretty likable guy, so... Um, we were pretty, I think it was pretty obvious when we were uh, filming that we were very talkative when we were winning pots and we were very quiet when we were annoyed with ourselves. So I guess it'll depend on what happens today. Now, it's a table of names that we all know. I'm sure you guys have played together before. So uh, are you looking forward to going into this final? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, there's uh, some of my best friends on there and it's going to be a lot of fun to play with all of those guys. We have lots of history and it's going to make for interesting spots. All right, well, good luck to both of you out there. Thank you. Heading towards the final table for the second global qualifier is Michael Toms. And uh, what a story. You qualified for absolutely nothing to come here, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's absolutely dream, yeah. yeah. I play a free role and uh, I hope I can make the first place. And yeah, it's like a Cinderella story. <laughs> so you are actually the wild card going in here. They don't know much about you. And we're all looking forward to seeing you play here in the final. <sighs> Kevin, you're disgusting. My name's not Kevin. I'm playing bad. That's why I'm mad. It's really great for poker that this table is like half women. <laughs> Willinowski, champion of the ladies. I got you. Good luck. Can we get to go there, I think? I'm up a thousand chips. I wish I was up a thousand chips. Moving in the right direction. I don't want to get kissy when I'm mad. It's time to fill the last seat in our main event as we get this second global qualifier final underway. In seat number one from Canada, it's Joanne Lu, who's absolutely been storming through the live poker scene, and she comes in as our table short stack. In seat number two, it's the hometown favorite, our chip leader, and Montesino Casino's own qualifier, Florian Strasser. 
in seat number three, it's Dominic Nietzsche. At just 21, he's already racked up caches in 18 different countries and is a well-known face on the European poker circuit. In seat number four, American player Melanie Wisner, as well known for her love of a good prop bet as she is for her serious poker skills. <laughs> In seat number five, Canadian Ben Never Scared B. Wilanowski. He crushes online tournament poker. And in seat number six, it's Party Poker's own qualifier from Germany, Michael Toms. And getting the game underway are your hosts, Jesse May and Griffin Banger. This is it. Six players, one seat in the Premier League, and as Wilanowski cleverly illustrated, it's a battle of heavyweights. I'm thrilled to be joined by, currently he's ranked the top multi-table tournament online player in the world, Griffin Benger. And Griffin, it's a great lineup. Yeah, it's a fantastic lineup. Uh, obviously very, very happy to uh, to be here and, and sort of getting the, the inside scoop with what's going to be going on with these great players. Um, it's quite a lineup. Look at the starting stacks. Florian Strasser, who is in your heat, he's the current chip leader, but closely followed by Benjamin Wilanowski, uh, who's going to be a lot of action. Yeah, he, he definitely has a, a favorable seat too with, uh, with Florian uh, and Schwan uh, on his left. It's really great for poker that this table is like half women. It's so nice to see you guys. Yeah. And Wilanowski, and champion of the ladies. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> great? <laughs> yeah. we, got, we got Germany's first female supernova yes, here. Yes, we do. <laughs> and we got... Uh, Ben teasing Dominic there, but it is true, and it's not just uh, female ladies. poker players here well, making up the numbers, anything, Griffin. Uh, between Melanie hey. and Zwan, <laughs> you have two very multiple, talented uh, poker players. Times. Yeah, it's, it's exciting to see. I mean, uh, usually, you know, you see a lot of sort of online qualifiers come in here that maybe don't have the, the, the kind of uh, pedigree of, of some of these players like uh, like Ben and Dominic, so uh, expect to see a lot of really advanced uh, play over the course of the day, for sure. One thing we saw in the heat stages, else. especially between you know guys like you and and Andre and, and Ben, was kind of uh, the meta game, you know, uh, which I mean by like setting it out early. Do you think that's there's there's any history going on here, or people who want to kind of set an image early on in this thing? Uh, I think that everyone's kind of aware. I mean, the other, the great thing too about the the Premier League is that you're able to see uh, right away, you know, what kind of hands people are playing. So, I mean, if you get to this level of the heat, as as we just see Strasser flop a set uh, against Weisner, I think this might take the attention here. Yeah, absolutely. Now she's opened uh, under the gun. He flatted in the small blind. And are you fast playing this, or are, are you slow playing? I think it's definitely a slow play situation. She's always going to continuation bet uh, on a board like this, and also she'll she'll definitely. Uh, two barrel on a lot of different cards. That might not be the card that you'll see her firing again, but if we had seen sort of like a jack or a nine, she might fire again trying to push him off a hand like pocket sevens or pocket eights. So she's not giving him credit for a king or stronger yet? I don't think so. I think she may give up here, but if she fires a second bullet, I don't see her firing a third because she'll definitely put him on, on a king or better. And for Strasser right now, you know, what are the, what are the advantages of raising versus calling? Uh, I think we'll see him calling a lot here. I don't see a lot of advantages into raising uh, because this is definitely a situation where she's just trying to barrel him off a hand like pocket eights or nines or maybe a weak king, something like king ten suited. Uh, I, I would imagine yeah, that we nice. see Strasser check the river here or maybe even lead out hoping that she has a hand uh, like a king that she might check back. But most of the time I think Weiser's going to shut down here. He's kind of click raised. Uh, the check raise 33 up to or 30, 31 up to 90. It's really interesting, actually, because Strasser's representing a very thin range here. We, we, we really wouldn't expect him to flat a hand like 4-5 in the small blind here. So he's representing pretty much uh, a set, which is obviously a very thin Because he's never doing range. this it's, with a king. Exactly. He's never doing this with a king. He wouldn't reopen the betting when they're so deep, especially since they, they are two sort of the, the, the chip leaders in this, in this uh, situation. I don't pr particularly like the raise there, but I think he also maybe had convinced himself that she did have strong holding like a big king, and he'd be able to get sort of a, an extra street of value out of her. Great start for Florian Strasser. Started as chip leader, and it's only continuing. And aside from yourself, uh, Griffin, who, you know, one of the top online tournament players in the world, the field of qualifiers for this, qualifiers and pro in this global qualifiers, guys like Ben Wilanowski and, of course, Andre, and at this table, you know, Nietzsche, Weisner. I mean, it's a, it's a massive lineup. We're going to see some 
real technical stuff here that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that full by Michael Toms there is, is a testament to the fact that, uh, you know, he's not necessarily uh, familiar with this kind of setting. He's not going to open a hand like 6-7 suited, even though he is so deep and it is a hand that plays really well. And he'll get a lot of respect from early position, but uh, he doesn't really want to get played back at, at. He made a very, very uh, tight fold, actually, uh, in the last heat with ace-queen. And that's sort of a testament to the fact that he's he's definitely one of the tighter players. And he's going to have a tough time. He's going to have to get a lot of big hands uh, in order to, uh, to compete for the 125k seat. Yeah, and the, the fact that this is really winner take all, uh, that dictates the strategy for all these players, uh, different than the Heats? Uh, yeah, and actually that's why I almost give um, a, a big edge to Ben uh, because he is the kind of guy that will push his edges and will play for big pots and because it's winner takes all, takes all I mean maybe not with 7 8 offsuit for, 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 for his whole stack but definitely see him pushing a lot of edges playing for big pots and once he has chips he's a very very dangerous opponent because he will raise any two cards. First time of this final we're getting to see Swan Lu uh, she is a delight to watch because I mean, she, she takes hyper aggression to a, to a nice level, uh, which is pretty serious. Yeah, and she has some, some great results on her resume, too. I mean, you know, cashing for half a million dollars uh, in San Remo just last year, and then, of course, uh, in Bahamas during the PCA for another 600000 So she's won a lot of money in tournament poker, and uh, she's definitely a force to be, uh, to be reckoned with. Strasser has this thing going on, we saw it in the heat as well, where he's really just kind of a lot, gets in tots in position and just allows people to bluff at him. Yeah, and, and that's really a great strategy considering the kind of players. I mean, I think that he sort of uh, gives off uh, this image that he's sort of, you know, maybe a tight qualifier. But when you talk to him and you watch him play, you realize that he's actually uh, playing very, very intelligently. And in a situation like this, she's actually gotten Schwann to sort of shut down when she actually does have a hand that a lot of good players would two-barrel. So, I mean, Zwan is actually quite nervous that Strasser could be very strong here. Yeah, it, it's one of those situations where uh, when you when you think about Strasser's range here, uh, a lot of them do include hearts, a lot of them do include jacks. There's really not a lot of hands that he would fold on the turn. Uh, even with pocket sixes here, he does have the six of hearts, turn to straight draw. So I think Schwan recognizes that, and she's going to fold a lot of the time here, even though she you know she still has a chance to, uh, to, to hit her hand like a straight with the 10 on the river. Everything going perfect for Florian Strasser. On pretty much every pot he's Except played. for that four on the river. <laughs> Except <laughs> for that. <laughs> All these players, of course, have to be very aware, not only of what everyone else is doing, but sort of of the image they're giving off. Um, and what, what, who, who right now for you is, has got to sort of, you know, be careful? Uh, well, I think that everyone's aware of what, what Ben is capable of. Um, and that's, that's really going to be uh, the biggest dynamic at the table, the fact that everyone's seen that he will put all the money in uh, with, with a weak hand if he thinks that it's, it's going to work. And that's really going to play into the fact that the, the, the less experienced, experienced guys like Michael Toms uh, probably won't be making a lot of moves. This, is, for instance, is a really good spot for him to open on the button, but um, he really feels more comfortable with premium hands. And it's going to be a really tough time for him if he, if he continues to not take his spots in position like here with the 9-jack. It is. It's. It's the ultimate Cinderella story with Tom's, though. I <laughs> Absolutely. Mean, and he looks more like Jesus than Jesus himself. It's, <laughs> it's just great. I know he's thrilled to be here. Uh, Lou having a decision here. I mean, it, has she got three options, or do, do you like the raise best? 17. Best of all. I think that she really has two options here. Um, I mean. The fact of the matter is, is that she probably thinks she has an edge in any pot against someone like Florian. Um, and in a situation like this, actually, Strasser has, has a pretty big hand, blind on blind. But she would never really limp in a situation like this. She's not going to play out of position. And that's a great flop for Florian right there. I would expect sort of maybe one bullet out of, out of, out of Schwann and then shut down and the pot being dragged to Strasser here. You know, you... Obviously, they came from uh, the same heat, so they have a bit of history. Didn't have too many pots head-to-head -head against each other, but obviously uh, had plenty of time to watch the other player. And maybe Xuan Lu feels like it's about time she beats him raise. in a pot. Yeah, what's well, interesting here uh, about this particular situation uh, is we have a raise here uh, from Strasser that I, I, I don't really like. I think that it would be a lot better, and I'm not just being you know sort of results-oriented here because we can see the hands. But the fact of the matter is, is that he showed he was willing to call ace high on a queen-10 board, so that might convince Xuan to kind of barrel on the turn, knowing that he will call with something like ace-7 on the king-queen board. The fact that he raises, uh, she's going to fold most of her range there and never two barrel, so he's losing a lot of value there. There. But I mean, the cards are going his way so far, and he's uh, he's the chip leader. The format here, of course, 
these six players now playing down to one with all the chips for that that Premier League. And uh, I mean, a lot of guys like you, Griffin, yourself, and some of the best players in the world seem to have gotten excited about. You can qualify, I'm my guess, for any tournament in the world you want. That this was a, something you really wanted to be part of uh, when you look at who's in the Premier League main draw. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, even, you know, when I first started getting into poker, seeing these guys on television, uh, you know, getting to the level that we have gotten to, it's still the dream to sort of be at the table with them, see how we match up. Uh, you know, we pr probably played so many hands, uh, just as many as they have, and the idea of challenging ourselves against players like Patrick Antonius, players like, uh, you know, Tom Dewan, it's, it's very, very exciting. So it's just a great opportunity for everyone who's still at the table. Inflection point for Dominic Nietzsche. Uh, Strasser has been very active. Dominic's recognized that. And this for him now, good enough to put the three bet in from the small blind. Standard? Uh, definitely. I think that he's recognizing that Strasser uh, is is opening a, a great deal of, of, of hands, having that chip lead. Um, and, you know, having an, a suited ace six, you also have that ace blocker. So it, it's pretty much better than any other uh, line that he could have taken from the small blind. If he were in the big blind, we might have seen him just call the one chip raise uh, so that he wouldn't have to reopen the betting. But from the small blind, it's definitely the best, uh, best course of action. And a, a nice hand there by Dom. This is a really tough field and I think beating this would be an accomplishment in itself. But then I like, to compete with like all the best players in the world, that would be amazing. That's a winner takes all, so I really have to go for the win right from the start. There's no waiting around, no going up the price ladder, so I'll go for the win. It is a bit of a shame with Swan. I mean, uh, her being so short because um, in the heat, and I know if she has the freedom to, she's she's liable just to get frisky with anything, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she has a very face-up stack right now. Uh, I don't think she, you're going to really see her entering a pot uh, unless she's she's willing to go with the hand. Uh, she might take take a steel spot with a hand, sort of in late position that she's not willing to stack off with. But you won't see her three bet folding a great deal with that with that kind of stack on 25 big blinds. Well. Ben Wilanowski is reaching for three bet chips. Um, what are the dynamics of the table that that make you know this a good play with with a lot of hands? Well, it's, it's also a great hand to be three betting with. I'm not surprised at all to see this uh, kind of thing happening. But it's also very dangerous even with a hand like Ace King uh, because it, it is a lot of chips and it's it's uh, you know you never really want to level in more than 100 big blinds with Ace King. This is six handed. However, I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw a four bet from Wisner uh, and and maybe even a five bet from Ben. Uh, but he might just uh, be giving it up. But I don't see her flatting here. But it's hard almost almost not to because you don't really want to reopen the betting to get a, over 100 bigs di deep in. So once Wisner, she's been three bet. Once she starts four betting, she has to be willing to get it in. If she wants to kind of pot control, see what happens, she, she must call now. Yeah, it, it's, it's about being balanced, right? I mean, uh, if she had a hand like ace-jack or ace-ten, even ace-queen, she obviously understands that she's ahead of Chris. Ben Wilanowski's three-betting range, but she doesn't necessarily want to get all her chips in the middle uh, with a hand like that, and that's something you need to be willing to do if you decide to four-bet a guy like Ben Wilanowski, because he will put the whole rack in your face. <laughs> right, and and Wisner's saying right now, this is Ben Wilanowski, fine. If, if he's woken up with kings or aces here, good luck to the gentleman. Absolutely. <laughs> it's winner take off. I got a race. Whatever I have to do, I'm not going to I'm going to show him who's boss. And that's that's another thing actually. I spoke about how, you know, it's not always the best thing to get over 100 blinds in with a hand like Ace King, but the fact that it is winner takes all uh, and the fact that it is six-handed, she's obviously going to be way more willing uh, to put all the chips in the middle. Now, when Ben Wilanowski three bet, uh, did he have a plan uh, for what what the, the four bet, the five bet, that kind of thing before he did it, as he obviously did uh, in the heat. Well, this is the kind of hand that I think Ben would, would almost love to five bet all in with. I mean, she's, <laughs> I, I'm being perfectly honest with you. I mean, it's, it's a hand that, Look that at runs those pretty, stats, 46%. Pretty, pretty hot and cold, yeah. yeah. And again, she is she's very polarized here. She either has a hand that she's willing to call off the entire rack with, or she doesn't. So I'm very interested to see what Ben here does here, because it looks like he's reaching for chips. He's not he's not happy folding this suited Jack Seven. Because I mean, I just got the feeling later on after watching the hand with the seven eight and the kings that he already knew he was five betting all all in when he three bet. Um, and boy. Is it, is it important to qualify that he's one of the best players in the world? Because people are watching. I mean, 
tell me about it. Well, it's 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 one of those situations where this puts a lot of pressure on Melanie. I mean, I think we can we can both agree that she's just going to end up going all in here, uh, and he will be folding. Uh, but this is interesting that he's actually re-raising here instead of going all in because this is a very similar situation uh, to what happened with Ben and I. And I told him after the hand, I said, Alan. "Why didn't you just five bet?" And then I would have folded, and 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 now we see. He's obviously going to fold. Yeah, because by allowing Melanie to get the chips in first, he's kind of giving up equity, right? Yeah, I mean, well, in this particular situation, he's 46% to win. So had he known that, you, you know, it would be a different <laughs> story. Um, but uh, but a nice hand by Melanie. I think she recognized when she 4-bet there, she might get some 5-bet bluffs. And a little bit of an eye roll there, which yeah. is interesting for yeah, Melanie. Yeah, you're trying that on me? What do you think? Yeah, and they know each <laughs> other pretty well, too. So that kind of gave her a look of, come on, like, you know. <laughs> Up to Kitty 900k. games down the street. <laughs> Up to 900k for Melody Wisner. That'll feel good. Um, Schwann's only got 155,000. So, uh, is that danger zone? She's definitely in the danger zone right now. But one double up, and she's right back to uh, to you know 40 or 50 blinds, which is very playable in this structure. Join us after the break as the global qualifiers continue to battle it out for a seat in the Party Poker Premier League main event. Welcome back. On the casino floor, the second global qualifier final is playing out to determine who will win the last place in the Premier League lineup. Let's head back over to your hosts. Now, when we usually see these, these six-handed tournaments, players starting at level stacks, with the staggered stacks, I mean, how much is that going to be a factor for who can get busy and who should get busy? Uh, well, with the blinds starting at 3-6, uh, there is a lot of, uh, definitely a lot of play. Uh, no one's coming in particularly short. Uh, so it's really deep stack poker. It'll be interesting to see how it, uh, how it goes down. Wilanowski opens Four. under the gun. Six ah, Tom's is calling. We're definitely going to see uh, Shuan Lu is now woken up with pocket eights. I would imagine she would go all in here, uh, and we'd get two folds from from Wilanowski and Toms. I don't really like the flat by by Michael Toms. I recognize how deep they are, but again, it's about it's about your image. I think that he needs to recognize that everyone thinks he's really really tight. And were he to three bet in a situation like this, I would actually expect Shuan Lu to fold her pocket eights uh, because she would imagine that he would have a, a, a bigger three bet opening uh, than a hand like pocket eights. And for Xuan Lu, this pretty much automatic. Yeah, and a bit of a Hollywood here from uh, from Michael Toms. I would imagine that he would fold the weak ace uh, to this jam. He did come up with some 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 great plays on the later streets in his heat and showed a lot of character, uh, Michael Toms. And you know, I guess he could. You know, he's going to look at his stack and you know. Things can happen, right? He knows he's going to need cards to win this. And listen, if he's patient. Yeah, and I think that's also that's also something that he needs to be uh, uh, aware of. Is, is is patience will pay off. Let these you know big players kind of bludgeon each other for a bit, and uh, and and sort of sneak in later when he has some bigger hands. I always, when I see Dominic, I forget how old he is because he has probably, as a poker traveler, you know, he's just turned 21, never been to Vegas, but as a poker traveler, he's logged more miles than anybody, probably played as many live tournaments as half the people in the world, and, you know, he, he, he's one of the top in the world, a number of countries cashed in. He's a real amazing guy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty remarkable story. I mean, you do look at how young he is and how much he has accomplished, and the fact that he's really out there going for it. It's great to see him in the second heat, and it's great to see pocket queens uh, when you look down at those, especially when you raise the button the previous hand. We raised 13,000. I guess Ben Wilanowski is the kind of, and he's, he's passed there, Ben says, but he's the kind of player that when things go wrong for him, it looks real. I know all his successes, but he probably has some days where it just gets really ugly, you know? Oh, I've, I mean, because his style, absolutely. right? Absolutely. I've heard a great deal of stories from, and we're seeing oh, a raise here from Michael Thomas. Wow. And this is what we were really talking about yeah. earlier, Jesse, is the fact that he has to use his image to his advantage. And I actually wouldn't necessarily expect um, uh, uh, Dominic to, to, to reopen the betting here because of that image and the fact that he recognizes how tight Tom's is supposed to be. So I'm going to expect to see a flat here uh, from uh, Dominic and playing the hand in position. And he could win a pretty big size pot if Tom's decides the barrel. It's a beautiful play. His timing is just wrong. Exactly. I mean, there are a lot of situations 
situations that we spoke about, like with that King 4 suited, where he may have been able to put in a 4-bet, uh, but right here, it's just a matter of bad timing, and Dominic is is, is trapping and also pod controlling, because he doesn't want to get all the chips in against Michael Tom's aces in a situation like this. So probably an ace is as good for Tom's as a king. Uh, and what is this flop going to be for him? It's, it's interesting. Uh, obviously, Dominic is never going to fold uh, on a board like this. Um, we're going to see a, a bet from Tom's. But the way that the rollout's going to come, it's going to be very, very interesting. It's going to put Dom in a weird spot because he can never put Michael Tom's on having a five in his hand, given that he's re-raising out of position and the image of him being as tight as he is. So we'll see a call here. And based on the board rollout, it's going to be really tough for Dom to keep calling. Yeah, these players, you know, had quite a long session in the heat. And what Tom's is doing right now is out of character for what Dominic thinks he's capable of. So already, like, on the... Oh, boy, he's even got the best end. But I was just thinking, I mean, on the turn, you know, Nietzsche was going to be in a tough spot anyway. Yeah, and that's 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 such gin for, for, for Michael Tom's because I think that Dominic's also going to recognize that oh, so Michael... Check this. Yeah, oh, Koi, so Koi check this. checking his cards <laughs> just to uh, just to make it look like, uh, you know, he's a little nervous about that turn card. He's repping a very thin range. He should never have a five in his hand here, but the fact of the matter is he does, and I would expect uh, at least one more call out of Dominic here um, and maybe even a weak check uh, by Tom's to, to maximize value and making sure he gets one more street on the river 95 it's 95 it it's funny isn't it because the fact that toms has made that big bet now it almost if dominic is is thinking well he wouldn't do that with aces or kings he'd be so scared now he now he's he's actually sort of polarized towards the weird bluffs? Yeah, and, and that's what's so interesting is that uh, you know, it's, know. It's, it's hard for, for Dom to have a, a five in his hand as well. And, Hold in. and that's a call, as, as we did kind of expect. I think he's oh, going he all, in. all in. And that is he just disastrous for Dom. And this should be a snap call from uh, from Michael Toms. I think this is it's almost inappropriate that he's waiting this long. He's never well, pulling I mean, there's a, there's a 9 10 out there. Right, you... right, right. It's just it's just not a fold you can ever make. Uh, and and also, you know, the fact if, if Dom did flop a set, he would go all in uh, on that turn card, never putting him on a five. So the fact that he know oh, sorry, I thought he just folded his hand for a no, second. No, no, he's just checking yeah. them. I mean He's trying he, to make sure. No, I think, you know, because Tom's has a little trouble sometimes with the bets and handling the cards, he has been taking his time with decisions and you know, for, for me, that you know, I think this would you got this to, would be uh, a disastrous fold right. uh, from Michael Tom's. Right. Obviously, you got to think like maybe he can have a hand like nine ten. But you also have to understand if Dom did have a hand like nine ten, he would not really go all in on this turn card uh, because again, it kind of looks like um, like Michael Tom's has a hand like aces or kings. But I think he's going to have to make a crying call here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because you know, I think don't you think if you're if some people think well, a good guy like that, he would never Please. put all his money in without yeah. the nuts against me. He called and, and and it's just a disaster for Tom. And the thing that we call this in, in poker is is a knit roll. It wasn't a slow roll. It's not like he was he was trying to to, to show him up there because he did turn a straight. But it, it is tough in yeah. a situation like that. Obviously, when he started thinking, Dom thing. thought that he might have been been good there. And he's as you can see, he's visibly upset because it does feel like a slow roll. But it's actually a knit roll. It's one of the situations where you have to call and uh, he just wanted to make sure now a five on the river could have kept Nietzsche in there would have been a split pot it didn't come and he is our sixth place finisher and Griffin I mean for Michael Toms you know he's now the to chip leader just sort of proof that I guess if you if you wait for good things to happen, they might. But he didn't. He didn't wait for good things to happen. He created he a good. Yeah, and that's what that's what we were talking about earlier. Is that if he's going to want to win this, he is going to have to maybe get out of his comfort zone, which ex, which that hand has to be. I'm not even comfortable three betting king five out of position <laughs> in a situation like that. And 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 you can almost see a coy little smile on his face because it really worked out. And 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 the rest of the table has to be aware that he is willing to open up his game. And and a great hand from Michael Tom. Very close, obviously, between the top three. And uh, Wilanowski strikes me as the kind of guy who's going to be more proactive with his medium stack than defensive. Yeah, he's definitely going to be pushing edges. He's going to recognize, uh, you know, how wide guys like Strasser and Weisner might open. Um, and, and he's shown them he's willing to five bet it all in with pretty much anything. First out of our final here is Dominic. Uh, let's talk about the last hand. How are you feeling about this? I'm not really feeling well about it. There's I don't know, I think I kind of misplayed it and, you know, it's a winner takes all formats so I didn't really want to fold my overpair but I guess he kind of had to have it there and I just, like when I went all in there was a four straight board and he, he already had a straight and then he started tanking and I actually thought I had the best hand 
but turns out I didn't. I don't know what that was. But. Unfortunate. Thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you, Kara. Who would be, who benefited the most from Dominic Nietzsche getting knocked out? I mean, besides, obviously, Michael Tom's all the chips. As far as sort of the table dynamics go. It would definitely be uh, be Florian. Again, uh, you know, Schwann's very, very short, so she's either kind of raising and folding, raising and calling, or pushing all in over a raise. Uh, but with Florian, especially that since he was showing he's willing to open a fair bit, um, with the amount of chips that Dominic 20. did have, he definitely would have put pressure on him uh, as the heat progressed. And uh, this is going to be a very, very interesting spot with the ace 8 suited for Strasser, because given her stack size, um, we might even expect a three-bet call. Just a call there by Strasser. And, uh, that's the the, the three-bet had to call the shove. Exactly. Exactly, and, and, and that's the thing, is that three betting ace eight, uh, you're never too happy calling the 25 big blind all in. So I think he also recognizes that he's kind of ahead of her range here. And if he flops a piece of the board like a draw or, or you know, like a like a top pair, he'll probably go with it. So There, there does seem to, to be this thing, as often as guys like you and Wilanowski and even Schwan are three betting the button, he's, he loves, to, it looks like, to just take flops in position. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's also a really good quality. Before, and this is an interesting hand too, because Schwan has to imagine this is all over Strasser's uh, flatting range. It actually isn't, because he has the suited ace eight, uh, but it, when he's flatting a hand, it's usually something like king jack, uh, you know, maybe king queen suited, something, a hand that he doesn't necessarily want a three bet call off, but that he would see a flop with, and it's a great bet by Strasser, and, and a good discipline check by Schwan, and you can see she's getting a bit frustrated with a, a big side there. Yeah, you hate having to do the check fold there, don't you? Um. That's what she was willing to go for. Yeah, the best case scenario for her there is that he had a hand like Ace Eight suited, but again, it's it's tough to sort of bet once when you're when you're this short. Even twenty one hands have been played. And I was thinking Wilanowski's been so quiet. It was like that in the heat too. Does he is he the kind that just sort of you know, wants people, just forget about him a little bit, and then comes on strong. Yeah, he, he definitely sort of comes in spurts, um, <laughs> and he, he really uses his momentum. If he kind of gets himself cut off in a situation like that, uh, as we see Melanie Wein uh -oh. Weisner, uh, <laughs> it'd be amazing to see him with 7-8 offsuit well, here in the just, small blind, or at least an 8 know. in his hand. You just know. <laughs> and there but, Ben is with the 8-9 suited. Yeah, and this is kind of... What? say it's a cooler but in in his world it's a cooler right Absolutely, <laughs> aggressive player picks up the kings on the button <laughs> and it's interesting to actually see ben flat here uh because, tell me why um that, well why would he do it is it because of toms in the big blind uh, I, I don't think it's because of toms in the big blind i think it's because he actually he hasn't played a hand in a while and he likes this hand so much that he actually just wants to see a flop with it he doesn't want to three bet this hand in his, this particular scenario because if she does tap, decide to four bet he's gonna have to five bet all in and that's something that obviously no one gives him a lot of credit for these days <laughs> if, he, if she does happen to four but he's gonna have to five bet all in <laughs> yeah of course he is <laughs> yeah when i fought, first saw the two hands i was actually expecting a three bed four bed five bet all in right. uh but an interesting board here uh for melanie and ben we're gonna expect to see a, a, a check call here from ben milanovsky and uh depending on what the turn is it could get a little interesting with a lot of the, the poker played today, there, there seems to be like the hand doesn't start until the turn after the check call uh, or the bet call on the flop. Yeah, a lot of really good players, uh, obviously, in this heat. Um, and they're going to stay very, very balanced uh, and pretty much continuation about 100% of the time. So Ben calling here, he actually probably thinks he has the best hand. And that's a very disastrous turn card for Melanie Wisner here. I, I would actually expect her to check back uh, her kings here. Obviously, it, to, to the viewers at home, it looks like a really strong hand. Um, but that card completes a lot of draws, and in this case, gives uh, Ben two pair. Right, and she's never happy about getting it in with, with all in with kings on that board. And that's going to be a really interesting river too, because um, Ben might actually value bet a hand uh, like a queen here, because Melanie might put him on a hand like king jack and call, um, you know, with maybe pocket tens putting him on, uh, you know, a draw. Interesting to see Ben check here. I might even expect to see Wisner look for some thin value from a hand like queen jack or queen ten, and then we'll see Ben. And snap it off and uh, and she'll have regretted it but we could see a check back as well so 
Wilinovsky has checked here to allow Wisner, I, I guess, to bluff if she has nothing. Does does that mean that, that he might even check raise? Um, I, I don't necessarily think so because she's also going to check back a hand like ace queen, like ace nine, like ace eight uh, on the turn and bet the river. So there's really no value in him check raising here because he doesn't really have much of a bluff range uh, and she's just going to end up snap calling with a better two pair. The reason she's betting on this river uh, is, is trying to get value from a queen because she thinks Ben has a hand like king queen or, or more likely queen jack, queen ten. So Ben, I think, is just deciding whether he wants to go for thin value because she might call with a hand like ace jack if he decides to, to well, raise. Well, she's, she's bet 46. I mean, so if you think he's never raising, then what is he thinking about? He's never folding. Right. It's interesting that he's deciding to raise here. Uh, I'm trying to decide what he thinks he can get value from with this two pair raise. <laughs> she is hating life right now. Oh, king, she's thinking. Oh, Wilanowski. Of Jack 10, nice hand, I guess. Call. Oh, she makes the call. But the, the meta game that there's the stakes are so high, you think people are doing weird things on the TV, and she paid them off. You know what? I absolutely love that. Uh, I mean, obviously, <laughs> in retrospect, being results oriented, but he recognized that she would pay him off with an ace. If she was willing to do it with kings, she certainly was do willing to do it with a hand like ace jack or ace 10. So, really good hand reading ability by Ben there to win a pretty big size pot. Great stuff from Wilanowski, and also kind of that that mental game, you know, just uh, you don't want to have to show the cards unless they pay for them. Show them that you're the strong one. He certainly has there. Yeah, uh, just a great hand there by Ben Wilanowski, recognizing that he could get thin value, uh, and that's that's really going to get into her head. I mean, and you know, it was one nothing Melanie with the ace king hand, but it's definitely one one now as he has more chips than her. I'm really excited, obviously, it's a great opportunity and um, I've got a lot of chips to play with. It should be pretty interesting uh, heat. I know a couple of people, so it should be fun and friendly. And it's a chance to play against one of the toughest lineups in the world and just really test your mettle against some of the best. It's everything poker should be. We'll be back after the break for more action from this Global Qualifier Final. This year, Montesino is hosting Party Poker Premier League Poker 5. There's one seat left in the main event still up for grabs, and the Global Qualifier Event 2 Final is playing out to determine who will win that last spot. Let's rejoin your commentary team. Wilanowski up to 700 plus. Uh, nearly on a par with Wisner. In fact, if you look at the top four stacks, this is going to be a battle royale to the finish. and. Obviously, no discredit to Schwan, but she's got some work to do right now. Yeah, she's she's definitely uh, in the danger territory. Um, but you know, one double up does get her into a, sort of a comfortable stack. Uh, she knows the players on her left. Uh, she knows Michael Tom isn't raising that that often, so um, it'll be interesting to see how she adjusts uh, being as short stacked as she is. The turbo raise twenty-two. You know, Melanie. Obviously, I mean, she, well, she's. I want to say she's still thinking about that last hand, but on these TV tables when the stakes are high, uh, anything you can do to just bother someone really works, doesn't it? Yeah, and she she has the dominating hand here uh, with the ace jack, and I would imagine, yeah, she does make the call here, um, and that's that's definitely the play in this situation uh, because even though ace jack is 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 beating his opening range as we see with the ace deuce suited, uh, it's not a hand you necessarily want to three bet because you're kind of turning into a bluff if you end up getting four bet because it's not really it's not something you really feel comfortable doing. So a good flat in position, pod control, and uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens if it comes out ace high. Well, really the, the first time these two have tussled, I know that Melanie was quite active, uh, you know, reading the reports of the last heat, and I'm sure Florian did the same. Uh, but beyond that, they may not have that much information about each other. Very standard for Melanie to just play uh, sort of a defensive uh, posture here, call, 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 or? Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much going to be call, 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 depending on the uh, on the run out here. I would almost expect uh, Florian to kind of to check almost any turn card except maybe a deuce. Uh, he might try to bet again to, uh, to like, uh, with a card like that, we're definitely going to see something like a check, check. I wouldn't imagine another bet comes out here, uh, unless, of course, the river's a, uh, a queen, a deuce, or, or a jack. Because you, at, at some point in the hand, you decide, well, if I've got the best hand, how many streets of value can I get? And you know, right now, Wisner, it's like two maximum, or 
Well, now it's that's maybe a really zero. interesting river card. Um, I, I played a, a hand with Straster in the in the first heat where the fourth heart, the fourth diamond, pardon me, came out on the river and right. he decided to check after flopping a straight. So this is a really good opportunity for him to bet, and she's folding pretty much anything that doesn't include a heart. Uh, but it's check, check, and, and she's going to take down the pot. Kicker plays. Plenty enough. That'll get her confidence back a little bit. Yeah, and we can see Florian shaking his head, and I think that's because he realizes if he was thinking about betting the river, it would have worked. Uh, and he's disappointed to see that uh, that she didn't have a heart in her hand. Time to take a short break from this match as Kara Scott speaks with Vanessa Selves. I think Vanessa Selbst is definitely the best female player in the world. She is strategic and brilliant at the table and has just no fear whatsoever and has the results to prove it. She also wins absolutely everything she ever plays. It's the first time that we have seen Vanessa here in the Premier League lineup. What do you think of all of the players that you're going to be playing against? Man, I mean, there's nothing really I can say other than these are the best players in the world. I'm really excited, you know, you come to play an event like Premier League with the intention of playing the best players in the world, and the lineup that Party Poker's put together is uh, nothing short of incredible. So I'm really excited for some very tough competition. The structure of the four heats is going to make sure that, you know, there's a lot of play involved, and hopefully, you know, the skill will come through, and hopefully I'll be able to play my best against some really amazing players. And also at the table, generally in the Premier League, we do see quite a bit of, uh, you know, it's fun, it's interesting. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Are you prepared for a little bit of theater? Well, yeah, you know, actually my heat, you know, I, I was a little disappointed with my heat because um, I didn't get the Tony G's and the Luke Schwartz's of the world. But, um, you know, I think so mine might be a little more serious or something. That's what I'm anticipating. But events like this, you know, while we're playing for a lot of money, obviously, and really good competition, they're always also, you know, always lighthearted. When you're playing the best in the world, you know, you can't expect too much of yourself. I mean, I expect to win, but at the same time, you know, I know there are some spots where I might get outplayed or something like that. Um, and, I, and I'm happy to, you know, these are my friends, and it'll just be fun to be at a table with them. And I'm sure there'll be some good-natured times as well as some uh, intense competition. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you at the table. Thank you. Thanks so much. How do you decide? How do you decide when it's time to get busy? Is it, there's just sort of this, uh, that, that's, the, that's the talent? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Um, uh, there's definitely sort of a stubbornness to Ben's game where if he feels like it is his time uh, and someone starts playing back at him, he, he might take it too far. Uh, and obviously that was evident in the hand against Melanie and, and obviously the hand against me in the last heat. But he's definitely getting a lot of uh, situations where he's able to open. Again, Schwann is forced to go all in. Florian's not doing a, little, a lot of three betting. Michael Toms is, is, is sort of tightening up after showing down that king five. So it's really a good time for him to run over the table as we see he's doing. Well, what he's done here is limp in on the button. Uh, that's a bit of a wrench in the works. The reason that he does that, it's because, again, it's a hand that he wants to see a flop with. Uh, and he recognizes that if he raises here, he has to fold if Schwan goes all in. And she's going to go all in with pretty much any decent king and any ace. So he recognizes that if he just limps, pod controls, plays it in position, maybe flops a straight draw, or, or pardon me, a pair of uh, pair of sevens, and he's probably going to take down this pot. Just here in the background, this Montesino Casino in Vienna starting to get busy. It's starting to vibe. And the check there. It's interesting. I mean, it's it's easier for us to say that it's it's not a great check uh, because we see the other uh, other players' hands. Um, but I think that he's kind of recognizing that if he bets once here, uh, it's really going to be hard to uh, to continue with the hand unless he hits a two pair, where he does have showdown value. He is ahead of them right here. And we should see another check from Schwan. I would definitely expect a bet from Ben here. He'd recognize he, he has the best hand, and any 10 uh, would have probably let out on the turn. Gets a call out of Tom's. We'll, we'll find out in a second if, if Tom's has more plans than just calling the three for what he perceives as showdown value. 
That's a very interesting river card. Uh, I think that the reason that Tom's called was because he thought that he was actually ahead with the three. It's a very, very thin value bet for, for, for Ben to bet here. And again, Tom's could have had a flush draw, so expect to see a check check here. I don't really think he's trying to bet him off a 10 or get value from a three. But I mean, he's been he's been show, showing us that he's willing to, to, uh, to, to, to get value very, very light as he did against Melanie Wiser in that hand. I mean, it's a weird old bet, isn't it? Oh. I have a seven. And a great value bet from Ben, and announces it with such confidence, recognizing that he does think Tom's just turned to three, um, and he's really a great hand, recognizing that he can get thin value there. Ben really on the top of his game. In a situation like this, where the blinds are going up uh, every 18 hands, goes faster and faster, uh, a guy like Tom's, uh, who's not going to be as active, you, you can really almost get him by attrition in a sense, can't you? Whereas you just know the blinds are going to get him sooner or later. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's not going to be playing a, a lot of pots and enough pots uh, to be gaining chips. He will be slowly bleeding out. Again, in, in, a, in a, a situation like this with the Premier Poker League, they're not being antis. It's it's not as prevalent. Uh, he's not going to blind out uh, that hard. But when he, when he loses small little pots like that hand with the jack three, uh, you know, he's very outmatched against a guy like Ben there because Ben knew he had a three. He knew he was going to call that tiny little bet and getting that max value uh, and a good re-raise here from, uh, from Michael Toms balancing his range. We're going to see a flat here definitely from Ben uh, because of how deep they are. If he flops a deuce here, uh, you know, it's gin. Onwards and upwards, and is there anything more to it than set mining for Wilanowski? We're about to find out. Definitely not, but what was, what was actually interesting was that Florian not only flopped, folded a deuce, but he also folded two diamonds. Uh, <laughs> we're going to see a check fold here uh, from Ben Wilanowski on this kind of board. He was just looking for a deuce. Um, an, an interesting check back here from Michael Toms. I really don't like it at all. Uh, they're deep enough that if he does, uh, he wants to build a pot here, but he's not. He needs to bet, and uh, I think Ben might even put him on a hand like ace-king and actually try to get to showdown with these deuces, uh, and that's going to be a disaster for Toms when he's going to win 100% of the time if he bets the flop. He played a hand, Michael Toms, against Melanie Wisner, uh, where he checked back the flop. It looked kind of odd, and then ended up, he ended up bluffing the river. Um, and I, I, well, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just wishful thinking that he's that he's got something uh, in his arsenal here. Uh, he's definitely calling here. Uh, obviously. If he, standard, doesn't, yeah, right. if he doesn't hit a diamond, ace, or a seven, uh, I think that he's probably going to check back here thinking Ben has some sort of piece of that board that's not folding. And it's just a really, really miss a good river for him here. A, a, um, a river that allowed, does it allow him to check or does he... He's going he's gonna to check back with the seven here and, uh, and be good. Um, I would imagine so. I don't really see much of a range. He's going to try to bet Ben off, but Ben expects, yeah. See, Ben saying I have a pair because he thinks he has ace-king. He's going to su be surprised and disappointed to see that he rivered a seven. Join us for more action from this final table of the Global Qualifier final table after this. Welcome back. Five left playing for one seat in that Premier League. Great stuff, and Wilanowski has done very good work during this second level. Maximized every spot, picked up chips right and left, and is in there with an average stack. You know, we, we've talked so many times about how, how big a spot this is for Michael Toms, the dream and all. I mean, my, even for a guy like Wilanowski, I don't want to say it's the dream. You know, he's he's living the dream, but it's a big spot in his poker career. Uh, it, the opportunity to get in the Premier League. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's great exposure for any player to play with that kind of, uh, you know, level of, uh, of of talent and have it televised. You know, it's it's really a dream for everyone here. A disciplined fold from Lou there. I think that the reason she decided to fold was because of the flat on the button. I think she may have gone all in over top of. Uh, Ben's Ben's raise, uh, as we saw from the previous heat, Ben was raising anything from Queen Six offsuit. So, had Tom's folded, she may have jammed. So it's actually great that uh, that that there was the flat on the button there. Um, as she see, we see, she would have flopped a flush draw though. 
Yeah, and, and here again, you know, for Toms to win here, we know he's gonna need a little help. He is getting just a little help, you know, just this little top pair every once in a while. Yeah, the cards have definitely been fortunate. Uh, obviously, more so uh, in regards to the hand against Dominic uh, earlier in the heat. Um, but even in a situation like this, again, being in position of Ben, I might even expect Ben to, uh, to just check fold here. Uh, but we could see, you never know what to expect from Ben. We could see a check raise, we could see a check call, thinking he's ace highs ahead. Um, but uh, yeah. If you're Ben right there, g give me Tom's perceived range in, in your mind. Well, it's really hard to say because we've seen him three bet a hand like ace seven suited, king five offsuit. I think that's why we saw that confused look on Ben's face because he's not really sure what and to make of this guy. It's a big bet. This is like a pot size bet yeah, for crying and, out loud. And that's actually why I hate the call by Ben. I think that uh, he's leveling himself in this situation, uh, thinking that his ace that his ace high is good when really Tom's is trying to take it down right here with top pair. I mean, um, is is like is Ben almost committed to making a play on this on later streets? This uh, pot's like huge. It, it is. It is getting pretty big. I, I re like I said. There's a lot of things that Ben does that I don't necessarily agree with, and this is one of them. I think that he needs to play. He gets into too Nine many two spots five. where he, uh, you know, levels That's himself and tries five. to take these small edges when really he's doing so well at value betting, playing in position, uh, you know, doing these limping and seeing a lot of flops. I don't like the call on the flop, and I would imagine he's going to fold the turn. I mean, he's called him again. Yeah, I, I was really gonna, hate I was going to say this now. I was going to think that this is the one thing he wouldn't do, but is he maybe got a range of cards in his mind for the river that he's going to bluff on? I, I think that he's he's putting um, Michael Toms Put himself Toms on, on a flush Yeah, draw. I think he's... <laughs> yeah, right. No, I think that he's putting Michael Toms on a hand like Jack-10, maybe 9-10. We're going to expect to see Toms check back here, and, and Ben realizes that he really misplayed that hand, and I think that's also something he re realized uh, in one of the hands that he played against me in the first heat, is that he put himself in a situation where he leveled himself and he's a big sigh there because he knows he 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 really just gave away uh, you know 180,000 chips how about michael toms the german the jesus look-alike i mean betting taken and that was a big pot i mean he just he just destroyed wilanovsky there i don't know what level they were on i saw it so many times in the television and every time I thought, or oh, one time you will play there. And yeah, now it is, and it's very tough. Uh, I'm the only um, amateur. If I win this table, it would be absolutely great. Uh, to play with so many big names and so many pros would, would be absolutely great. And maybe the, the only chance in my life. And yeah, if this happened, wow, poo. <laughs> Ben never thought that he would value one pair that strongly against him there, and it was obviously very frustrating to see him turn up that hand. I think he's pretty much said, it. hey, Ben, you called? I played it like a set. I played it like a set. <laughs> well, a set might have bet the river. <laughs> oh, man. Nothing like a good Tony G reference in, <laughs> no. for, in a poker broadcast. Oh, believe me, there's going to be plenty of, uh, of, of that phrase is going to come out in the Premier League. In fact, I know that the only reason Dominic, uh, or not the only reason, but I, one Wait, of the reasons so he was so disappointed not to make it is because he was waiting to use that on G. Yeah. And this is really interesting, too, because, uh, you know, Ben has a tendency to kind of, you know, run the cards he against 14 that. blinds. And he might actually call here with the queen jack, recognizing that Schwann's range included includes hands like weak aces, uh, you know, pocket pairs like eights, nines, sevens. But he might just uh, make the discipline fold here and let it go. But Ben likes to run the cards, as we've learned. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him call here as he called with the king 10 against me to knock me out of the previous heat. The momentum. I mean, Wilanowski was so on top of the tree. Uh, and the pot against Tom's, and now this. Can you imagine? Call if he calls and doubles up Schwan. Yeah, I mean, Ben's a roller coaster, and he's sort of looking to the heavens here and like, why couldn't I have just stuck to the game plan? And uh, he's doing some math in his head right now, trying to decide what her, her range really is. And I, I think 14 blinds is, is, is probably too much to call in a situation like this. Maybe if he had a million chips, he should do it. Um, but his game is opening a lot of hands, and he's only really able to do that being as deep as he is. So if he were to lose 150,000 here, um, it, would, it would definitely change up his game plan. And that's an important consideration. 
Yeah, a disciplined fold there. I mean, obviously, if Schwan turns up her fa hand face up, he's going to snap all and run the cards because, again, it was only a 53 to 47 favorite. Uh, but you have to imagine that Schwan turns up a lot of hands like Ace Queen, Ace Jack, and, really um, and, uh, and he really like didn't want to just double her up because she can be pretty vicious if she were to like get you know up to 30 blinds like as well. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a winner-take-all tournament, so I'm not going to hold back and be afraid of getting into marginal spots. Um, but I know Melanie and Ben, so it, it's, it's going to be a, a hoot. I'm up a 1,000 chips from where I started the heat. I wish I was up a 1,000 chips. Moving in the right direction. Moving in the right direction. Think about Michael Toms for a second. It, it did seem like Rather than choosing a hand, he chose a player to go after, being Dominic Nietzsche. I wonder who his next target will be or should be. Right, well, we were talking about how, um, you know, after that hand, he had a bit of a coy smile on his face, and we talked about how he might tighten up now that the rest of the table knows he's capable of that. And I think that's really what we've seen from him, uh, that he realized he kind of got away with murder there. And this is interesting, a 3x uh, raise, and this is also uh, kind of a testament to uh, Michael Tom's inexperience. Um, you know, making it 30,000, a 3x is not something that, you know, uh, what the standard in a tournament would be. Um, and it's kind of confused Ben a little bit, but he's always going to see a flop with a hand like this, especially with the pre-flop edge that he knows he hand has against a guy like Michael Tom's. But it makes him a little more uncomfortable to have to call the bigger bet. Uh, so, you know, it, it kind of works in Tom's favor in a backwards way? Yeah. Being I, inexperienced? I, I think so. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, obviously a favorable flop for Tom's here, knowing what we, what Ben and Wilinowski has. Um, but, you know, and you never know with Ben. He might decide to, you know, check raise here and represent, uh, you know, a flush or a better hand, and, and Tom's might make a, you know, disciplined pull. He checks back here. I love the way Tom's is playing. I know it's not, it's not standard, but it just seems to be... Uh, He's, he's doing things that are so off balance. Yeah, right now. And, and, and right now, obviously, we're seeing Ben bet here. Toms is checking back the flop, representing showdown value. I think Ben knows 21. that. I think Ben knows call that he's going to get one call, call from Toms here, uh, but, but he's always pretty much going to two barrel, especially if another spade comes out, because we saw Toms recheck his cards because he wasn't sure if he had a spade. Um, so, again, Ben is really using the fact that he thinks he can outplay Toms post flop, um, and he's betting with absolutely nothing here. And it's, I would, it's quite hard for, for Toms to call a big bet here. Yeah, I think that if if, if we see Ben sort of fire out, you know, 80 or 90 K, we don't necessarily always see Tom's calling. But I think Tom's also knows, um, you know, how full of it Ben can be. So he might, uh, you know, with that favorable river, no spade, might make the call. Um, how different is the big bet from the sickly big bet? Um, I think that it might even be in Ben's uh, Ben's best interest to bet something really, really big here, because I think that if he bets something like 80, 70, 65,000, we're going to get a call with an ace here. But if he bets something like 120, I don't think that Michael Toms is necessarily going to call. So we're going to see how much he decides to fire out here. 108. Somewhere about halfway between. Yeah, 108. Is, it's, it's a pretty good size. I mean, if he knew what Toms had, he'd probably bet something like you know, maybe one, even 130, but it is a big bet. Um, you know, it's 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 going to be tough for Michael Toms, but I think that if he recognizes how you know fed up uh, Ben really is with him, he might make a very good call here. Again, Ben's repping a very thin range, uh, pretty much two pairs and better, um, and you know he could have pretty much anything. Right, Toms is only pretty much beating bluffs. Yeah, there, there's no hand that Ben is ever betting for value here that uh, that Toms is beating for sure. And it's decision time for Michael Toms. This could be, well, if not the most, certainly one of the most important decisions he's going to face. Yeah. Uh, the, ch the chance to wound Wilanowski nearly permanently or let him back in it. Yeah, the other thing, too, is that as an inexperienced player, it's very easy to sort of convince yourself. I mean, when you look at a board like this, you're losing to, to, to dozens and dozens of hands. And, uh, and that's the thing is that he needs to realize how polarized Ben is here. He's either stone cold bluffing or he has a pretty, pretty, like very, very strong hand, but it's really hard for him to have something like that. So I would like to see a call here uh, from Michael Toms. Um, but again, I mean, look, look how long it took him to even call with the straight against Dominic. So I think that's something that Ben's considering, the fact that it took him so long to call with that. It's gonna be hard for him to call with just an ace on this kind of board. He's got Wilanowski in the stew pot here. I mean, uh, as used 
uh, and, and uh, accustomed to being uh, to bluffing, being put under pressure, having all your chips in his Wilnowski, and this can't be fun. Yeah, and I think this is a, this <laughs> is know? actually definitely the turning point for Ben, and uh, and he, the call has been made, and Ben's just going to muck his hand, almost embarrassed, and that's going to be a turning point for him. That's really going to cripple Ben Wilnowski, um, and he's not happy about it. A big sigh, seeing just the one pair, which he knew that he had, um, and he's blowing up a bit here. If he can find his composure, maybe find a couple of big hands, uh, he'll be able to sort of, you know, level himself. But right now, it's, it's not looking good for Ben Wilanowski. It's a slippery slope down, and Wilanowski's on the slide. Have a look at his, uh, his chip graph. Uh, any of these uh, stats stand out at you? Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much the uh, the steal attempts at 44%. We've seen him be opening a lot of hands, definitely more than anyone else at the table, which everyone should have come to ex uh, have expected out of him, especially given his p position. Um, three betting only 12% of the time. I think it's because he saw how it backfired the one time uh, he did it against Melanie Wisner's Ace King. So he's been doing a lot of limping, a lot of flatting. Some interesting sort of obscure plays by Ben, which was, were working out, but uh, <laughs> definitely slipping away from him now. I mean, that number yeah. steal attempts, actually, I don't want to say it's on the low side, but it's on the low side of many of the numbers we've seen over the course of these heats. That's because he's been limping in exactly. and also doing a lot of the stealing from early position, which doesn't count in that yeah, uh, stat. Yeah, the, the limping's definitely, uh, you know, had he min raised both of those pots, he would have won both of them, and his steal percentage would have been a lot higher. Raise, so does four I think he's just probably gonna take it easy for a while unless he gets a big hand, and that is definitely gonna qualify as a big hand given his reputation and the fact that he only has about 30 blinds. 30 big blinds, this this is a bit of a cooler. He should be getting it in here all the time against Strasser. Yeah, we're gonna see a three bet, uh, 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 probably a four jam and, and a call here from Ben Wilanowski. Um, and also Strasser has a, a queen of spades blocker, so it won't be looking too good for him if we if we get, a, get it all in. Is there any argument that, that Ace Jack is a little on the margins here for getting it all in. It's it's definitely a little uh, a little marginal in general, but given his reputation, um, I would have to imagine that uh, that he's just going to go for it here. He's also extremely frustrated uh, with the way that things have gone. Um, you know, it's hard, especially when you're playing live poker and you're just playing that one table. It's different than online. Uh, you know, you can kind of think like, oh, like I used to have 800, now I have 360. Now I'm short. Now I have this hand. You know, and it's 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 hard not to just sort of overvalue a hand like this in this scenario. We're going to see an all-in from, from Strasser and a call from Wilanowski, I would imagine. Strasser has gone all-in. Wilanowski. I call. I call. That's 285 left. This is a big pot. This is a big pot. This is a very big no, pot. No, no, I, I, it's all right. It's only 750, OK. Um, but for Wilanowski, even though he's only 40% here, the chance to get right back in it, isn't he a slightly bigger dog? Um, well, it's all about blockers, too, when people right. are folded and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, he's definitely uh, looking like he needs an ace, and there it is. Oh and, uh, you know, he's little, that little coy smile. He seems to be doing that a lot, <laughs> getting it in bad. Uh, Florian not phased, which is, uh, you know, surprising considering how important this pot is. But, uh, yeah, 97% of the river, and there it is. Wow, talk about roll oh. reversal. Strasser, and what a cool cat this guy is, will be left with half a million when he would be solidly up over a million. She's better at this stuff than I am. And Wilanowski gonna, to figure out gonna the get it all back at one fell swoop. 20 is 123, so. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever knocks him out is gonna get you know, a serious standing ovation from yeah. the other three. And, right? and a lot of chips, because when, when Ben's all right. in, there's a lot of chips in the pot. All right. Heard this story about you know this, this Stu Unger and uh, that he was at a final table of uh, I think it was Caesar's Tahoe tournament years ago mm -hmm. and he came down for breakfast the morning of the final table and the other eight guys at the t at the t at the final table were eating all eating breakfast together <laughs> you know <laughs> like how are we gonna get this guy yeah. Unger you know and obviously he, he knocked the ball out but um, this that's the that's the Wilanowski sort of what is it feeling exactly? you know. You know what? The, he actually he actually bought me dinner tonight, so uh, <laughs> so he's he's not as cutthroat as Stewie, uh, but uh, yeah. It's an interesting fold by Wilanowski um, with the King Ten offsuit five handed. Um, I think that he recognized that he didn't want to call uh, against uh, Schwan, um, so that's probably why. So specifically, yeah. Schwan related. Yeah, because King Ten offsuit is even. Uh, better than his average opening range, but he didn't want to have to call off Schwan. And a good call here from Wellenny Wisner uh, ahead with the ace four. 
the, the, the math is correct here. I mean, not just the math, uh, you know, as far as what they said, the number of big blinds and, well, the, the cards aren't, but... Uh, yeah, a good a good flop here for uh, for Schwann, obviously, jumping ahead to 75-25. Um, but there is the dagger, and Schwann knows that's pretty much it for her, um, and she's going to need, yeah, she's going to need a queen on the river. It doesn't come, so our fourth-place elimination is Schwann Liu. She was patient. She got her chips in in the spots she wanted to, and the cards... I have not cooperated for Xuan Lu. Four players now for one spot. It's really going to be uh, a between, I think, Melanie and Benjamin uh, Wilanowski here. I expect, uh, you know, Michael Toms to sort of sit pretty, and then it will probably get three-handed between those three. But it's, it's really hard to say. Florian's made all the right decisions. So it's, it's a really interesting four-handed battle here. But Ben is going to push the action now that there's no short stack. Absolutely. This global qualifier final continues after the break. This is Premier League Poker 5 from Montesino at the Gasometer Complex in Vienna. The Global Qualifier Event 2 final is underway and only the winner will go through to the main event. As far as four-handed dynamics versus the five and six, um, is it just like, well, Wilanowski can go from being a maniac to a super maniac, or does everyone else recognize that they have to change their, their hand range? Well, what's interesting and what we saw with him folding that King-10 uh, is the fact that, um, you know, there really aren't any short stacks that he has to be worried about um, jamming over top of his raises now. So we're going to see him really open up his raise range, um, and uh, Michael Toms should probably get a little more aggressive now that we're four-handed, especially that he's in position of the two really strong internet players. Um, but so far, we're getting some folds into this uh, first hand. Yeah, Strasser's got, you know, as the blinds have gone up here. A little stare he's down here between the, uh, <laughs> the two friends. 25 big blinds. Well, how has it's Melanie's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and there's some petting going on now. No peeking. <laughs> Her aims and goals as far as taking on uh, Wilanowski go, where she's just, is this just uh, regular stuff? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, you know, as soon as you start being all friendly with Ben when, when he's on your left, thinking that he'll start going easy on you. It was really interesting when I was on the table with him, I remember, you know, him and I were joking around and being friendly, and then the very next hand he three bet me. Uh, so, you know, it, it, there's there's really no friends in poker on this on this table. Uh, a very, very interesting flop here. A as disguised you see ace from yeah. Wilanowski. Well, it's one of those situations where he doesn't want to reopen in the betting with a hand that he think is ahead, thinks is ahead of her opening range. Because once he does that, if she decides to four bet, he has to fold a hand like a6. But it is disguised. We are going to see a bet. Okay. We're going to see a call. But again, Melanie not that far behind uh, with a lot of cards that can improve her hand. And, I mean, when Wilanowski calls here, I mean, it's it's the the least dry board you can think of. So he just can't be floating. I mean, you got to have something when you call here. Yeah, when, when he calls, she's he's, she's definitely going to put him on a range like a raggy ace, um, maybe even a hand like King X, uh, because, you know, she's going to bet 100% of the time on this board, so King X might even be ahead of what she has. Because when she raises here, let's, with, let's say, you know, 8-7 suited, she is going to bet once, thinking that Ben's not on base here. But, are uh, there, of course he is. Yeah, are, are there a lot of hands that he has that he'll be willing to pass? on the turn he doesn't have one of them but in her mind if you were to have a hand maybe like uh you know jack uh, eight suited and and the turn was a hand like uh, the turn was a card like a seven okay. he he definitely would um be willing to fold a hand like that uh she checks here because she recognizes she has some showdown value there are a lot of hands on the river that improve her hand um he's gonna check back i, I really like that check back because when he bets here if he gets raised he's not beating anything and he's never going to get two more streets of value. But never. now that she's checked here, he could have e either have called a bet on the river or make his own bet on the river. Is that the idea? I think we're actually going to see a fold here uh, from Melanie. Um, she's definitely seen that Ben is willing to uh, get very, very thin value. So he might even be betting a hand like Queen 10, hoping to get a call from a hand like a Jack. She doesn't want to make the same mistake she did before. Um, so. A he's, check he's back by Ben Milanovsky, which yeah. I really, really don't like. Um, maybe a friendly check? It's a little <laughs> weird. I mean... There's no friendly <laughs> checks. Yeah. Uh, Very aggressive <laughs> check. I feel like maybe he thought that he wasn't going to get value from, from, from much of her range. But if she did have a hand like sort of king-queen, maybe queen-ten, she would have probably called a small deck. Uh, but even with jack-ten, I don't necessarily think she's going to call. There, uh, I mean, I don't want to say he was scared, but do you think Melody has it in her mind? I want to check-raise him like yeah. you check-raise me. Uh, I mean, 
you know, I, I'm petty like that. <laughs> and that's the thing is that it probably would have worked. So, uh, you know, a conservative check by Ben and maybe a different side of Ben that we're seeing uh, with that with that check back, with that kind of showdown value. Uh, maybe it sort of leveled him out a bit after after sucking out with the ace jack. So maybe he'll be play playing a bit of a more disciplined game, um, realizing that he's getting a second life here. Last time Strasser opened up. After, it was the, the first hand after losing the big pot against Wolnowski. Uh They came over the top of him. He threw it straight away. Um, you know, he's not feeling very strong right now, table image-wise or stack-wise. Yeah, and it's also very difficult with the, with the players that he has on his left. Uh, we, as we see, Melanie look down King-10 offsuit here. I would almost expect to see her three bet. Um, and that's, again, it's a very, very tough spot uh, for him to be in on the table, having these two very experienced, um, you know, online uh, pros at the table. Uh, Melanie Wisner's one of the better heads-up sit-and-go players in the world. It's something that she, you know, she used to be a full-tilt pro. Uh, now she's a, a, a pro at lock poker. So so she, is, she, she has a lot of experience uh, in these shorthanded fields. And right here, as we see, uh, she's putting the pressure on with the King-10. And, and raising. guys with 30 big blinds are, are great to 3-bet, aren't they? Because... Like, what's Strasser gonna do? He's got to shove her full. Exactly, he? and and that's what that's what makes this race so good is that Melanie recognizes that while King Ten might kind of be ahead of his opening range, he's never gonna four bet in worse. Uh, so she's able to kind of turn her hand into a bluff, and uh, and Strasser's gonna fold a lot of his range that he's not willing to go all in with. It would be a great four bet all in for Strasser here, but it's very high risk. Uh, Melanie hasn't really been three betting light that often, so he doesn't want to you know make it make a decision here where he thinks in his head, don't do this just because my queens didn't hold. Um, you know, and that's hard. It's, it's a mental thing in this game. You don't want to make a mistake after something's gone, not gone your way. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what Strasser does here. It's a great thing to think about. I mean, great time to take the risk. The risk being that, listen, things aren't yeah things aren't going so well anyway. Winner take all. Exactly. And smart that's guy. Very 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 smart uh, jam here by Strasser. And we talked about how you know in his head he has to be thinking. I don't want to make a mistake here just because of, of the luck not going my way. But if he thinks Melanie's going to three bet light, he has an ace blocker. It is suited. Uh, you know even if Melanie ends up having a hand like pocket queens here, that can an ace five suited can definitely run that down. I love this four bet jam by Strasser. It's the right play. Uh, and Melanie's just going to going to going to Hollywood a bit here to show that she's not three betting too light and fold. Yeah, those the, the young guys these days love those suited aces when it, when it comes to the four and five bet jams, don't they? We've been seeing it on the WPT all the time and great to see Strasser pull this out of his bag of tricks. Yeah, Melanie's just uh, just trying to make it look like maybe she's, uh, you know, folding a hand like Ace Jack. But uh, but if for anyone really knows, you know, uh, what's going on, they know that she has a game plan with a hand like Ace Jack. She's either three bed calling or flatting. So obviously she's just uh, Hollywooding a bit here and and probably gonna let her hand go. Does the winner take all? I, I mean, is can that come into it here at all? I think that it definitely can, but you have to imagine that Melanie should have had a plan going into her three bet here, and, and that's what's surprising to me that she's actually considering calling here. She's obviously not calling thinking that she's ahead, but she might be considering calling knowing that she has a hand that you know has, has live cards against his range, whether it's you know pocket pairs like pocket nines, pocket eights, or maybe ace queen or ace jack. Uh, so maybe she might be thinking about taking a risk here for the 25, 30 blinds. I de personally don't think she will, um, but uh, you know it's 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 a great jam by Strass for really putting the pressure on, and uh, he's definitely got to be happy about that turn of events. Yeah, great stuff. Well, Florian made his own luck there, right there. Uh, the cards haven't exactly gone his way. He's going to fight to the end, isn't he? Yeah, it's good to see him really keep his composure and uh, and make the right decision after getting so unlucky against uh, against Ben. Michael Toms, not only big chip leader, he's not far off from having half the chips in play. In fact, you know, I'm sure if you told him you could go into heads up with one and a half million, uh, he'd, he'd just grab onto it uh, because you know how it is. Heads up, big blinds, there ain't much in it. Yeah, sitting at 1.4 is obviously, uh, you know, a great situation for Michael Toms here. I think he's almost, he hasn't really had a lot of hands to play with, but he's definitely letting sort of the other three experienced players maybe bang it out a little bit. It's weird that I'm sad that I have a loss of 1.2 million chip pot now that I see this right here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, he, but he's, He's definitely gonna should be slowing down. Uh, not classic strategy, but for him, 
slowing down is okay. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, too, is, uh, you know, it's it's very favorable to, for him right here. As we see a very interesting flop wow. here. Wow. It's, it's uh, under the Melanie. gun from Wilanowski and a flat call from the big blind from Wisner. And and he actually, he raised this exact same hand, the previous hand, so uh, he likes these 9-8s these and these 8-7s uh, to, to raise with for sure. Wisner's options here. Bet, call, check, call. They both know what's going on here. We're going to see a bet from Melanie here. Um, when when Ben checks back at, on the flop, Melanie recognizes that he's doing that with showdown value, a hand like a nine, uh, maybe a hand like pocket eights or pocket sevens. So she's always going to turn her queen jack here um, and, and rep sort of uh, an ace or, or maybe a ten. Um, ben might call once, knowing that she would bet her entire sort of uh, draw range, but also it's just a really, really bad, bad, bad card for his hand. So we might just see a fold here from Ben Milanovsky. If he stubborn Ben, well, I, I was going to say if he did fold it, what it would I mean? It would have been one of the few times yeah. tonight. Is uh, he's That's a uh, really great river card for Ben Wolanowski. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like we talked about, he recognizes that that Melanie Wisner is always going to bet her draw range on that turn. Um, so, uh, depending on what the river would have been, he might have called anyways with the nine. Obviously, he's calling a big bet here uh, from Mel if she decides to make it. But uh, we'll see what she ends up deciding to do. She she has checked here on the river, uh, so we should see a check fold, or maybe a check raise. Is is there a thing about Ben as well where he just is trying to win nearly every pot so hard that he just finds so many more reasons to do things other than fold? Uh, I mean, because it just seems like he's gone for everything. He tries to find a way to win pretty much every pot. Um, and, you know, that's obviously a double-edged sword. But as we talked about before, when it goes his way, it really goes his way. He's going for the win. He's going for the jugular. A very disciplined check fold there by Mount Wisner. I think that she recognized uh, when Ben checked back on the flop and called on the turn that he at least had an ace or a 10 and wasn't folding. In this case, he actually ended up having a 9. But Melanie knows better than to, uh, to bet into that or to try to check race. The Premier League players are all starting to arrive in Vienna. We go over to Kara Scott, who has tracked down Yevgeny Timoshenko. Yevgeny is back in the Premier League lineup, and it's not your first uh, visit to us. So you actually know the structure probably as good as most of the people that are coming in. Will that give you an edge? I think it, it'll definitely give me an edge. That might be my biggest edge in this tournament, uh, playing with all these superstars, is knowing the point structure really well and, and knowing what kind of adjustments to make. There are actually quite a few of the players who didn't really look at the, uh, the point structure, didn't really look at what the permutations might mean. Do you think that that was a mistake on their part? I think it, it's definitely a mistake not to look at the point structures. Uh, in this lineup, though, I, I highly doubt that they're going to be playing in the dark. I, I'm sure uh, once they, they figure out what kind of tournament this is, they're going to look at the point structure and adjust their play based on, uh, based on how many points they have and how many points their opponents have. Do you think that there are any weak spots in this lineup? I know that's a, a one that people don't generally like to answer, but uh, anything out there that, that sticks out? The weak spots are probably the qualifiers, and they're not necessarily weak spots. I think the first, the first player that won the qualifiers a pro, and then the the second the second playoffs is going off right now, and I, I think I think there's a couple of pros left in that one too. So. It's definitely going to be a tough tournament. Yevgeny is, I would say, uh, known as sort of a more calculated player. He's extremely good and extremely capable of making big moves, but I think he's known as a little bit of a more conservative player, at least pre-flop. I mean, he's not going to be the person that's going to five bet shove it in light. Despite not winning last year, Yevgeny played what I thought was brilliant poker the entire time, and he's just a really great and fearless poker player. Uh, Yevgeny's a brilliant player and never seems to lose. So the only time I've really watched uh, Yevgeny play was on my friend Jake's uh, 25k heads up rail this year, so he, uh, he got a little bit frustrated with our, our drunken chance, but we'll let him off with that one. 
We saw you do some really spectacular things in the uh, the last Premier League main event, so hopefully we see that again, and we're looking forward to seeing you play. Thank you. I hope so. Thanks. Join us after the break when this final table continues, and we move a step closer to finding out who will win a seat in this year's Premier League lineup. Welcome back to the second global qualifier final table as we fill the final spot in the Premier League. Now back to your commentary team. All the action kicking off here. Early evening in the Montesino Casino in Vienna. I don't know if you've ever been here before. These days, obviously, a lot of big tournaments around Europe. But as far as buzzing, vibrant card rooms, you know, the Montesino is, uh, is, is really one of a kind right now. Perfect. You can do nearly anything uh, here at the Montesino. You can order food at the table, you eat at the table, you can drink. You can play a $125,000 tournament, you know? <laughs> Get on TV. <laughs> and here comes Ben once again. Well, Tom's is flatted out of the small blind. Uh, the opening raise of Wilanowski, and Strasser's going to peel it off. And, you know, we know that Tom's has been doing a lot of flatting, but not as much from the small blind. This was really a three-bet spot, wasn't it? Yeah, and this is an absolutely disastrous board uh, for Michael Tom's here. He will not be able to for fold this ace against uh, what he imagines is uh, Ben Wilanowski's hand. And the thing 65. that's so fascinating about it, too, is that 65. from watching Ben in the past, he makes his sizing very, very big, and he balances it with big bets. So it's going to be hard for him to ever fold. And as Ben this sees is ugly. this, this, this is, is really, really ugly. This and this ugly. is going to be the big turning point of the entire tournament because there's no card that, ben, that, that will come that, that Ben's going to be losing to that he won't know that he has. And right? I, you know, I love what Michael Toms has done. I don't mean to be critical, but, but Griffin, the, the other reason this small blind thing, you know, if he's in position here, he's going to have a lot more control control over this pot. This way, Ben is just going to make sure money's going in all the time. Exactly. And 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 just Tom's is not going to be. And this is where experience really comes in. Uh, you know, Tom's is not going to know how to pot control uh, properly in this situation. As we just see a call from Ben Wilanowski here. And I think the reason that he's doing that is that even though Tom's may think that he's completely bluffing, uh, he doesn't want to scare him off. 145. He, he doesn't really understand when he needs to pod control. We learned that with the queen eight hand. Um, you know, he bet really, really big on the turn when it was eight, seven, five. When if he gets raised, he's not really beating anything. He just thinks he's ahead, he's going to bet, and he's going to get in a lot of trouble against Ben Wilanowski here, uh, as Ben is obviously recognizing that uh, Tom's has a big ace. If he decides to raise here, he might scare off his, his customer, who's only beating um, a complete bluff, call. and he's chopping against any aces. And that's why it's a really good call, because he's going to get maximum value on the river when Tom's might think he's trying to bet him off a chop. So we're seeing now with this call, there's now over half a million chips in the pot, one of the bigger pots that we've seen that, that hasn't been all in. Um, and we'll probably see a, a bet maybe around 200,000 and then a raise from Ben on the river. And that's how be a very differently, just a curiosity, how would Ben be playing if if he had something like a six or something like now, would he have played the same up exactly to this point? the same way? And okay. that's actually a, a pretty bad river card because uh, it's hard for Ben to to really. It's not hard for him to raise this river because it's very unlikely that that uh, you know Michael Tom backdoor to flush. But it's 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 hard to get value from a from a re-raise here if uh, if if Michael Tom's was about to, would bet here. You know if Ben raises, it's hard for him to call. There's half a million in the pot. Tom's has over a million back. Ben's got about 800k. I mean, are we, are we seeing, are we seeing the end of Michael Tom's? Uh, I don't think we're seeing the end. I think that we're probably going to see. And this is a very interesting sigh here from Ben Wilanowski, um, because I don't, he's never folding in this situation. But he realizes that the way the rollout is, it's hard for him to ever raise the river. Um, so that's, I think that's where the size, yeah, and that's where the size coming from because of the back door there. If, if the king of diamonds didn't come, he could have gotten so much value, and that's why he was sighing. He knows he's never folding. He knows he's probably winning, but he can't raise the river, and that's what's upsetting to him. <laughs> Tom's backed him off a little bit at the end there, I guess. But uh, you can see he's frustrated, he's frustrated. now. The 9-5, don't like it. 
And that's and what we're talking about when it comes to experience, right? He doesn't know uh, how, how poorly he played that hand because he just thought, I have the best hand, I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet. And, uh, you know, it, it, he lost a lot of chips in that pot, and Ben is now up to 1.6 million. You can see the pain on Tom's face, and for Ben there, that was a pot that could have been the big move he was looking for. Wilanowski, the orange line, now above one and a half million. And for Toms, he was smiling. It was going so well. Is this the final dip? Uh, yeah, it's it's it was the it's the turning point of the entire heat. Uh, we talked about how you know Ben lost that big pot to Michael Toms earlier, then doubled up with the ace jack, and that was the jugular hand. Um, but it's really a dream board for Ben Wilanowski. I mean, he has run exceptionally well. Um, but he's the kind of kind of guy that when he does run well, he wins big pots, and we've seen that all 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 tournament. He wins big pots. He's got a big stack. Uh, if you don't, you know, if, if one of these players besides Ben wants to be in the Premier League, they're going to have to take it away from him because he is prime man right now for Premier League poker. And he's in the zone, and, and that's the thing, is, is that he realizes now how close he is to something, you know, pretty special, and I don't think that he's going to be playing as high variance, um, but he'll definitely be raising almost every pot, as we see him here with the five deuce. Uh, it's going to be hard for him to open a hand like this, because we, because everyone saw him raise a 9-5, so he might be a little more cautious, uh, raising from early position, and obviously a very frustrated Michael Toms just flicking those cards in the middle. Yeah, that pot, no fun for Toms there. He, he, his head is probably spinning. And it's, uh, it's Strasser small blind Wisner big blind right now uh, Strasser has to decide what he's gonna do if he gets three bets you know, 30 big blinds I don't it's a know very very hard hand to uh, difficult this is interesting that she happens to have King 10 again because this is pretty much the exact same situation before I don't think Melanie's gonna make the mistake of three bet folding again when she has a hand that's you know pretty good blind on blind but I don't really think she's gonna three bet call either so we might see a flat here from her we might even just see her go all in for, for Strasser's, you know, 20, 25 lines. She decided to peel it off in position. You know, there is this little battle right now. Um, both of them realize how important it is to get the other's chips Ooh. if they want to take on Wilanowski later. And what, Weiser's got the nuts here? Yeah, she has flopped the nuts. Um, I think that Strasser is definitely deep enough to be able to get away from this. And a really disciplined check there by Strasser, recognizing that he has he has the showdown value. He's got um, 30 big blinds. Yeah, really? I think You're not gonna, he's gonna he's gonna fold at some point here. Yeah, I think that she's gonna uh, she's not gonna get more than uh, two streets here ever. Probably not even more than one. Uh, but now that it went check check, an interesting check back by Wisner check. and a great check on the turn by Strasser. Um, but I think that he's intending to pay her off at least uh, on one street, obviously with the aces and queens. Weird, weird to me that she would check the flop because as you said. These guys know what's going on. When you check the flop, you have some showdown stuff. You're intending to call at least one street. And if he if he's never intending to call, she may as well bet it anyway. He's never catching up on that board. Right, but but by him checking, I think Melanie recognizes uh, that he probably has some sort of showdown value that he's going to check call, but that he's never going to check call, call, call. So she's looking for two streets here, and I think that she's probably going to get it. Uh, as Strasser has obviously very underrepped his hand, and Wisner's has has kept her hand really in the dark by checking the flop. She wanted to make sure she got two streets, and I think that she's going to do that. As I think how big? How big do you go here? With 190 in the pot, I'd probably bet something around like 88,000. I think that she should probably keep it uh, in the two digits. Uh, she doesn't want to scare off that ace. She's obviously obviously wrapping a pretty thin range by having a queen um, or a hand like King 10. Strasser has shown he's willing to make big calls. I don't think that he's folding here on this river bet. <laughs> She's looking um, but it really here. depends. She's looking yeah. Greedy. <laughs> That's greedy. Is That's, that greedy? I, I think it is a bit greedy. I think that, <laughs> I mean, she is repping a pretty thin range, but she would check back a hand on the flop like a queen nine, like a king queen or a queen ten. So I think that he might even convince himself that, that she does have the queen here. Uh, he's not beating any aces. He's chopping with most, ace, most ace, aces. So the only reason he would end up calling here is because he, was, he would expect a, a, a chop. But... You know, that's why it's better to bet something like 88,000 to ensure that he calls. But it, it looks like he's, he might make a crying call here, and he's going to be, you know, pretty upset with the, with the result. So many guessing games at the highest level, Griffin, and you can only guess right until you guess wrong. It's going to happen sooner or later. He 
sees the story. Yeah, and he, he said nice hand right away, and I think he realized that, uh, that she did play it pretty optimally. And it turned out to be a good bet. I think she recognized that he did have an ace, a weak ace, and that he wasn't going to fold for 122,000. And uh, just a tough break there and a really tough line on blind spot there for Strasser. Yeah, it's good to be greedy. I knew that the final would be pretty tough no matter what because even though my heat was fairly um, easy, uh, comparatively, uh, the other one was ridiculously stacked and uh, so I knew that, that at least two really strong players would make it through. Um, I don't know anything about uh, the guy who's the uh, casino VIP or whatever, but he seems all right. Um, I think it's going to be reasonably tough. I have a good stack and um, I'm also pretty good at turbo sit and goes, so maybe I can take it down. That's put Strasser uh, in not only the danger zone, not far from the panic zone, uh, about 15 big blinds, but with the blinds going up quite quickly. You watch so Ben and some of these players, you say, do they really care? They seem to be uh, so loose, so aggressive. They care. This is big for all of them. They're just playing as optimally as possible. They recognize they have to win, and that's why that's a good jam by Florian Strasser. He can't just sit around and wait for a hand like ace-king or ace-queen. He needs to get it in the middle, and he needs to double up back to half a million chips. And on that same line, isn't there this thing that even though Wilanowski has the stack to push people around, because they can't ladder up, there's no incentive to ladder up, it's actually a little bit harder to push them around. You know, Tom's here, right? And this is interesting here with Tom. Um, he again has the ace-10, obviously way ahead of Ben's opening range, but he's not going to feel comfortable leveling in, you know, more than 40 blinds, which is what he has with a hand like ace-10. He's just going to see a flop, and I think that we should probably just see a bet and a call and then a shutdown from Wilanowski, unless a diamond comes. And then maybe, you know, five of diamonds or a three of diamonds would be pretty interesting. That's a binding if I check. Oh, sorry. Yeah, on first half. I check. check, check. An interesting turn of events there, actually, Jesse. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it seems like Tom's checked out of turn, but, uh, I, you know, it's obviously up to the floor, man. I, you know, uh, Tom's does have a, a sometimes a little bit. I, I think he might make some moves unintentionally right there, but he, if he was okay with it, then. It's not, uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, a little no, bit no, of a no, confusion no, here. The bet is 25, yeah. uh, which is a pretty small bet into the size of the pot. Uh, Ben's obviously getting a pretty good price with that diamond draw, so you'd imagine that he is going to call. He might even check raise in a situation like this because Tom's checked out of turn right away with the ace-10. Um, I think that the reason that Michael Tom's did that is because He's a little, a little scared almost um, with what happened last time when he, when he overvalued the ace 10. So we decided to check back, pod control in position, which I actually kind of liked. Um, but now it looks like Ben might just check fold, or he might bet and try to, you know, get him to fold a jack, which obviously he does not have. Yep, you probably well, win. <laughs> and that's a really, really, uh, oh, I mean, way good. it's a really poor check by Michael Toms as well. You can see he's playing really apprehensively now. He has to go for value there within a hand like ace-10. Um, but he's just trying to get the showdown with the winning hand now. He's, he's scared, and that's yeah. exactly where Ben wants him. Been rattled off his game a little bit, Toms. Understandable uh, in that uh, Wilanowski <laughs> really, really spun him awesome. around. And... Uh, Trying to nice angle, angle me into a light call. Wilanowski does that to people. I know your tricks. Yeah, he definitely throws them off their game, and uh, you know whatever game Michael <laughs> Tom's has, um, you know it's it's been really all over the place. It's hard to really predict, but he's definitely thrown them off it uh, with a really really tight check back with the with a really strong two pair uh, heads I saw up. That. <laughs> you were like, mm -hmm. yeah. And then once I once I pump <laughs> fake, I kind of got race thirty. Six race thirty. A little min raise from Tom's on the button. Interesting to see. Morning. I'd be really curious to see if, if Tom's makes the light uh, sort of ace rag call here. I don't really think it's something that he he would normally do. Um, you know, if uh, oh, Melanie's called behind. She's she's called oh. in the big blind. That how strong does she have to be? Uh, I think that she's she, she's probably pretty loaded here. I'd say maybe ace jack would be the weakest hand that she would hold here. Uh, you know, two eights be, would, is yeah, two eights exactly. good enough? It's, it's, the kind of, it's the kind of hand that she would want to call with, uh, but not have to risk her entire stack. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking she must be really strong here. Just because, um, you know, you sort of expect that 
Tom's is going to be a little tight on the button, mm -hmm. and know, we'll hit. see what she's got. Obviously, it beats. It has to beat Strasser. Yeah, it's, it's the ace ten. Yeah. And uh, that was an aggressive play, but she knew exactly where she was at. Yeah, I think she recognized that uh, you know Florian was going to to go all in with a pretty wide range, and she doesn't have to risk her whole uh, you know uh, stack with that hand. Good luck. Um, and you know she's obviously a big favorite here. Yeah, great spot for Wisner for Strasser. It's been it's been a nice run. He's had some nice plays, but without help, he's a gone pecan. And, and that's, that's actually a pretty good turn card for him. I mean, it, it kills his uh, his six out, but it also gives him a, a king, queen, or a jack for a split pot. Not to be. And a uh, player who got to see quite a bit of in this global qualifiers, young, aggressive, talented. Coming in as the chip leader, we have just lost Florian, unfortunately. Give us your impressions of the play today. Yeah, it was a great event. Uh, was excited to play it and I got unlucky with Queens versus Ace Jack and that broke my neck. One of these players going forward to the Premier League, chip wise, there's there's now not that much in it. Yeah, you know, Ben Ben with 1.56 million. Uh, Melanie now pretty close behind. She's over the 1 million mark for the first time at 1.13. Uh, and Michael Toms uh, with 927,000 who, you know, took a bit of a hit there with that Ace 10. Join us next time when this second global qualifier final reaches a conclusion and we find out who wins the last seat in the Party Poker Premier League Poker 5 lineup here in Vienna. <sighs> Kevin, you're disgusting. My name's not Kevin. I'm playing bad. That's why I'm mad. Just turn me a diamond. Let's just sweat the river. <laughs> I'm not greedy. That's my one time. <laughs> wow, he got it. One time. <laughs>